Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Champ Buster in the 5-Minute Pool on ICC. This is a rematch from the Scandi loss that I took to Champ Buster not long ago. Let's play d4, knight f6, knight f3, and we'll play a Akali with e3. This is an intriguing game I had against Champ Buster the last time we played. So I'm out for revenge. He plays a very early c5. That's perfectly acceptable. Yeah, let's go bishop d3. If he takes, I'll take with the e-pawn. He plays for d5. Okay, let's just castle first. And I'm probably going to play b3, bishop b2, and fianchetto now. Uh, this is like the, the Kali Zucker tort way of handling this setup. So you put the bishop on b2, which may in turn support knight e5. Which if they castle, I wonder if I should do that right away. Actually, I think I'll play a3 just to stop knight b4. I think that's a helpful thing to do. Makes the bishop feel more comfortable on this square. All right, and he's going to try to establish his knight in. Uh, he might be looking to play f5 as a follow-up there, so maybe I should play knight e5 straight away before he does that. Hmm. Yeah, because that knight could be very pesky. I could also take it and then play knight back to d2. But I worry for my light squares if I do that. Nah, I don't think that's a good way of playing. Hmm. So how to deal with this? c4, he's going to go f5. But then maybe knight c3, maybe I have enough pressure. Okay, let's go c4. I know he's likely to support it with f5, but I'm hoping that with c4, knight c3, I can attack that pawn on d5 and give him some trouble. So let's play it like that. I'm not going to push c5, at least not right now, because I don't want to close the center and take the pressure off of d5. It's very important that we keep hammering that pawn. He might want to play something like bishop c7 or bishop e7 as a result, so his queen helps to defend this pawn. Hmm. And if he does that, okay, he's going to play this way instead. That also makes sense, just maneuvering. Maybe knight e5 now. But the thing is, knight e5, bishop takes, pawn takes. It's going to be hard to arrange f3. I could take once, pawn takes, and then play knight e5. Maybe that's best. Let's do that. Let's at least take once, and then think about jumping the knight in. Yeah, let's go like this. So we've got competing outposted knights. Hmm, he's just going to develop. All right, so f3, do I want to kick that knight away? Then he takes on e5, very important point. So maybe I need to play knight b5 first. But just push it back to b8 then. Maybe I need to play king h1 first. Hmm, rook c8 looks like a good response to that. Some tough decisions already here. Knight b5, bishop b8. Okay, I'm going to do knight b5. I just want to force him to mess up his coordination with bishop b8. Okay, I can play f3 now, but he's going to go a6. That's the thing I don't like about that. Hmm. King h1. Okay, let's play king h1. Try not to use too much time. a6, knight back to c3. So we've got to withdraw this guy. I want to go f3. I'm just worried that after bishop takes, pawn takes, queen b6 check would happen. So I'm trying to remove that as a threat. Yeah, my setup is very much predicated on getting f3 in. So now would be a good time to do it. He's going to do bishop takes d4. Hmm. Having a hard time arranging it, guys. Uh, bishop e2 or bishop c2? Maybe knight e2. Knight e2 looks like a move. Okay, knight e2. Yeah, so then he can't trade knights. And now we firmly protect d4 and also the knight on e5. Also, maybe knight f4 could be coming. Okay, now I'm feeling good, but the problem is I have two minutes. And he has three. <laughs> All right, so... Do, do, do. 
He keeps coming up with these really annoying moves. Okay, let's take that. I need to give up my great outposted piece, but I think it was necessary. Now where he, where is he going to put that? Probably f6. Knight f6, knight f4, bishop f7, something like that. Maybe rook e1 then. We're going to play faster. I think the position is clarified and we can afford to do that. Let's play queen d2 first. He might play queen d6. We just need to get coordinated. Queen d2 looks sensible. Maybe on queen d6, bishop c3 is good. Also might be nice to get the knight into e5, but I think for now, let's just bring this over. If he plays bishop b8, I can just play g3. Looks okay. Or even bishop c1. Ah, uh, bishop c1, there's g5, so yeah, I'd have to play g3. So he therefore plays rook in. Hmm. Bishop c3, what does that do though? Bishop c3 doesn't do much. Rook e5, he's just going to play knight e7, I think. Then maybe I can double up. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to play this anyways. And just see if he plays knight e7 or not. He does. So rook e1, take, pawn takes, followed by e6. Eh, maybe too aggressive. Let's just bring this back. All right, so our knight has been diverted from the good square. Maybe bishop takes would have been stronger. I don't know. Okay, let's get on this square. Probably bishop b8 is going to happen now. I'm going to have to play g3 to stop the mate threat. This isn't working exactly as how I would like it to. I thought I had a good position after knight e2, but... He's defended well, and I've probably missed a couple opportunities here. Okay, let's, hmm. let's bring the knight back to f4. I feel like he might play knight e6 and trade it. Maybe knight h3 then, keep it. Yeah, let's keep that knight. I feel like it has some potential. He can try to go attack d4 with a move like bishop a7. I can play bishop back to f1. Let's keep the bishop on this diagonal just so it's aimed at f5 and g6. Ah, double attack. Missed that move. Good idea by him. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to sack the uh, d-pawn, although I don't know if I should have done that because when he takes knight b3 is also a threat. Yikes. Okay, let's come over here. <laughs> Got to hurry too. I was planning on playing knight g5 after he took on d4, but does that work? Can I take here? I guess he just takes on d2 then. All right, well, we got to do this. Mm, down a pawn. Position looking uncomfortable. Maybe knight g5 would have been stronger. But swindling chances. Swindling chances remain. <laughs> hmm. That bishop is coming into a really nasty square. Uh, okay. Yeah, he's playing bishop d5. I can't I can't do much about it. I guess I'm just gonna take a pawn and hope. I have 24 seconds left compared to his 54. 97 is a threat. Please blunder. <laughs> Ooh, what the? Wow, that's a nifty move. Time warning. That is a cool one. Good idea by him. Hmm. Check. Okay, so let's do this. At least we're attacking bishop and also pawn on d4 now. Attacking his bishop. Okay, let's do this. 12 seconds. All right, so if he wants to go after my pawn, Check. he's got a blunder knight d6. Mm -hmm. 
Check. Check. All right, this is going to be tough though with the time. Check. Let's just bring this up. It's going to be really tough with the time. Check. I'm honestly just going to pre move now. Check. I don't know what else to do. And give a check. Check. All right, it's a draw now, but yeah, I'm going to lose on time. Uh, all right, so we lose on time, but uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I can't really blame him. It's a, it's a time scramble at the end. He definitely outplayed me in uh, the middle game because I had a good position after knight e2, but I feel like I botched it. I wonder what move I botched it on. Probably something like right around here, like maybe queen d2 wasn't so precise. I just at some point played some lame, inaccurate move that allowed him to take over the initiative. Because once he was able to get in, I feel like once he's able to play rookie eight, he's completely fine here. Probably better. Because, yeah, like this bishop b8 move was probing, h2, and also he was able to attack d4. I missed queen b6 attacking d4 and b3. Did a decent job of fighting out of this, but... Yeah, this is already pretty bad right around here. I was lucky to get a pawn or two back and somehow escape to an endgame. Where I was actually up a pawn for a moment. Although I think it's likely to be lost back. Hmm. All right, let's go take a look at it. So this is a Kali with e3. Black playing c5. And then d5. So you've seen some of my Kali games where I play for c4 but here i thought it was better to uh fianchetto the dark square bishop because i think when black establishes pawns here and here c4 is not going to lead to much of an edge for white black has good central presence so instead playing it like a kali zucker tort by fianchettoing the dark square bishop makes more sense i believe yeah and i took a time out to play a3 to stop him from playing knight b4 but the downside was he can play knight e4 and he's ready to support that knight with f5 which is annoying so let's just see what the engine thinks about this position this is probably still kali theory but i'm wondering what the best way to handle this knight e4 incursion is so i did play c4 trying to destabilize d5 he went f5 i did play knight c3 here I took. The engine prefers knight b5 followed by a4. That looks odd. Why a4? Trying to use a3 like in the case of this? I don't know about that plan. Or just knight back to c3? Maybe, but... I took on d5 instead. He took back and then I played knight e5. So establishing a counterweight to black's knight on e4 is... A good plan, I think. Bishop e6, and now knight b5. Yeah, you know what? I can just play knight e2 directly here. I don't have to go knight b5, and then after a6, bring the knight back to c3, and then to e2. I can just play this move right away. I don't know why I didn't think about that. And the reason why I've been delicately uh, playing around this knight on e4 is that should I play f3, they're always going to answer with bishop takes e5 attacking the pawn on d4. And if I take, there's queen b6 check. King h1, knight check. f2 with the fork, and white loses an exchange. So it's important to realize that. Uh, that's why I played that king h1 move later, to sidestep that. But yeah, here knight e2 looks like the most direct way to play it. And this helps with the plan of playing f3 because, let's just play, say black plays some generic move. I could play something like knight f4, but let's say f3. Um, if he goes for the same tactic I just mentioned, now queen b6 could be answered by bishop d4. So I'm not forced to play king h1. So instead I did this, attacking the bishop, he went back. 
And now king h1. This could be a little bit slow, though. The engine thinks black is fine. Maybe bishop a7 wasn't so good in view of my next move. Yeah, knight g6 or knight c6 does seem better. Attacking d4 and also e5. What if I continue like this? Take, take, queen b6. And still, there's a threat on f2 <laughs> that I have to be cautious about. And with black's knight on c6, they better control d4. Yeah, so that is a concern. But on bishop a7, once I saw that knight e2 was possible, I was thinking my position was better now. Not hugely so, but it looks comfortable. Hmm. It's possible I just don't have much of uh, a concrete way of proving my position is better here, though. I felt like I was missing something, like some sort of way to really take it to black, but maybe it's just one of these edges where uh, my pieces are slightly better placed than black's, and it's not going to translate to an attack or material, but... Um, I'm pretty sure I could find a better deployment of pieces than what I did. Maybe rook e5 is to blame. This was kind of a planless move. I just played it because I didn't want to spend too much time, and it looked kind of annoying. But knight d7 is attacking my rook and forcing it back. I thought for a second, like, maybe I could sacrifice my rook on e5, and then after the queen moves, try to force through pawn to e6. But I just don't really think it's working. Black has d6, uh, e6 covered by three pieces, so it's not going to work right now. Maybe I could play it as like a positional sacrifice or something, but I'm still skeptical. Yeah, so rook e5 was, was not so great. I need to do something better right here. Maybe knight h3 and try to come to g5. Maybe my knight looks good on f4, but is better on g5 where it attacks the bishop. Even, though, even then though, like where do I go from there? Say I get knight g5 in, do I take the bishop? It's pretty bad on f7. Yeah. I don't know. White has to milk this position somehow. It would require quite a bit of reflection, I think. So instead we traded, and I think once black gets in rook e8, they're at least equal. This is looking fine for them. Bishop b8 forcing me to play g3 and soften up my king. Yeah, knight h3. I had a feeling knight h3 was kind of risky, but I didn't just want to trade, although I probably should. I thought I could preserve my knight, and maybe it could make an appearance at g5 in the future. And here black found a nice idea, queen b6. So better would have been bishop c2, apparently. Defending d4, but also defending b3 with the bishop. And then I can keep my disadvantage to a minimum. Yep, now I'm just losing a pawn. I want to play knight g5 here, after giving up the d-pawn, so that this pawn is defended, but unfortunately it runs into knight b3. And then if here, I think just d4, defending the knight. Otherwise, I might be able to win material back because I'm threatening checkmate and the knight, but d4 is a good reply to that. Yeah, and somehow I found a way to confuse the issue, but I'm pretty sure he just missed some good way to consolidate. He's even minus two and a half after I win the g-pawn. It's kind of funny. So king, simply king f7 is good here. Bishop takes f5, king f6, g4, bishop c4. And his rook plus two bishops and dangerous d-pawn are probably a much bigger factor than my extra pawn. Yeah. Hmm. So he did this. This is kind of a fancy move because if I take it, I get mated. Checkmate. I was impressed by that move. <laughs> So I went here, though, to defend. Yeah, and Check. here, too, he's better. I do get my pawn back, but... Yeah, and the rest was just a, a time scramble. I almost saved the game. Check. Almost did it, but he was just Check. that far Check. ahead on time, Check. and he made it count. I was desperately Check. trying to recoup Check. some of this time, but it just wasn't happening. Check. Check. So, all right. Uh, interesting game against Champ Buster again. I like playing this opponent because we always seem to have entertaining games. I wish I would have played knight e2 because knight b5 was not a very efficient move. Knight e2 would have been better. That's consistent with my goal of 
trying to play f3 and also trying to maybe get knight f4 in. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll be back again tomorrow with another one. Talk to you guys later. Bye.